Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I'm doing a quick little review of Carnegie. I've done a full solo playthrough where I teach all the rules. It's on my channel right now. Go check that out if you haven't because in this review I'm going to assume you've either seen that video or you know how to play Carnegie. And while you're on my channel, make sure you go check out my top 10 most anticipated games for 2022. Carnegie was on that list, but I won't spoil where. Go check it out. Right off the bat, I want to say that I really enjoy the solo mode for this game. I think it's brilliantly done. I love how quick and simple the management of the AI system is, of Carnegie, that you're who you're playing against. And it really comes down to one thing, right? You... You flip over that card, it tells you exactly what Carnegie's going to do. It's very simple. But if there's something that he's unable to do on the card, you don't have to check a bunch of charts. You don't have to, like, try to figure out, like, what's the best option for him. No, you just move the card over and he scores some points. That is such a brilliant system. I really hope designers take that system from this game because it just makes it so easy, so streamlined. You just get Carnegie's turn out of the way and then you can enjoy your turn. And that's really important in a game like this because Carnegie is taking 20 turns in the game, just like you are. He is uh, putting out eight donations and you know he's doing a lot of stuff and so if it was time consuming or you know mentally difficult to execute his turn that would really drag the game down but that's not how it is it's so fast and so simple very little mental load goes into running the ai and that is something that i really love they just nailed it they nailed it with the solo mode here Carnegie is able to behave like a regular player, you know, uh, taking donation spots and, you know, spots on the map and, you know, snatching up departments that you might want. And it's so great that you can see on the back of Carnegie's cards what action he wants to take or what is his preferred action for you to take so that you can take that into account strategically when you're planning your turn. Many times I decided not to do something that I wanted to do just because I could see that Carnegie was really going to be able to take advantage of it. And that's something that would exist for a real player as well. So that's a great little system. And you can increase the difficulty of the solo mode by putting in some of these more advanced cards, which often obscure what Carnegie is going to do on the back. So you have a little bit less information. That works really well as well. Now, I don't need those cards yet because I'm <laughs> really bad at this game. I've played, I think, six or seven times a mix of, of in-person and uh, on Board Game Arena, where you can actually play the solo mode. And I've really only had one good game <laughs> of Carnegie. Uh, most of the time, it's been uh, mediocre at best, or, as you saw in the playthrough, really, really bad. So... You know, I don't need this to be any harder yet, but I'm I'm glad that they've included that in the in the game. So the solo mode gets a huge thumbs up from me. Now let's just talk about the game itself. I really enjoy this little worker loop that's going on where you have workers in your uh, lobby. You're moving them to the different uh, departments and spending money to activate them. And then when you take an action, you can activate the department, get some benefits. And depending on the department, you take those workers and you put them out onto the board where you're then going to be able to use them for income and bring them back to the lobby to move them into departments to start that loop all over again. That's a very satisfying, interesting mechanism. Works really well. It's very interesting trying to time everything just right. Be as efficient as you possibly can. Take advantage of those income spaces, moving those tracks up. It all really comes together in such a, a, a nice way. I also like the replayability here where you have all those departments, but at the beginning you're taking away half of them. And so certain departments won't even be available for this particular game. Some might have, you know, just one or two. And so that mix of departments really does change the game up and change your strategy up a lot. And that's really good. So there feels like there's a lot of replayability here. I maybe worry slightly that, you know, with enough plays, it could start to feel a little samey. You only have those four different actions that you're taking. And so I do worry a little bit about it maybe becoming a little stale. It hasn't 
gotten that way yet, but I do worry about it a little bit. And also maybe if you're better at the game, it feels like there might be a little bit of sort of on rails, you know, some things that you have to do. Again, I, I don't know the game well enough to be able to make a decision on that. Time will tell. But I do, I'm a little concerned about that. I also really like the donation system here, where throughout the game, you're spending that money, ever increasing amounts to put those donations out there and essentially get to choose how you're going to score your in-game points. That's really neat. And, and the fact that Carnegie is, when he puts his donations out there, he's going to score for what you do. So that being an extra little thing that you have to keep in mind, ooh, do I really want to do these kinds of projects now because Carnegie is going to score points every time I do one. So maybe I need to pivot and do something else. That system works really well as well. I think it's safe to say that this isn't a game that's going to, you know, convert the masses over to this style of game. There's nothing in the look, nothing in the theme, nothing in the mechanisms that, you know, is going to change someone's mind about quote unquote soulless euros. You know, this game's really for someone like me. This is my sweet spot. So if you're like me and the idea of a solo euro that plays in an hour with a very simple to manage AI system, if you find that as appealing as I do, then this game is definitely for you. I'm going to give Carnegie an 8 out of 10. Now that's for the solo mode. I have not played this multiplayer yet, although I'd like to. But I suspect that Carnegie might be a little lower for me as a multiplayer game. I really like the solo mode that much. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for in a medium weight Euro game. So there you go. That's my initial thoughts on Carnegie. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.